guys. Welcome to Demon Performance. I'm John and I've been running this channel for almost four years. Uh, if for you that have followed the channel, you may have noticed I've been inactive for over a year. Well, I had a serious illness, I had some surgery, I had to sell my straight twin, which was the bike that I did a lot of uh, video vlogging on and before that I had an MT-07. And before that, I had a, a smaller bike, a 200cc bike. Uh, but now I'm back. I'm going to hope to do monthly or weekly, maybe not weekly, vlogs on my new bike, which is a Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Now, I'm 73 years old, so that puts me in a unique position to be able to critique the Royal Enfield and compare it to the Street Twin and which one is the more authentic retro bike. Well, I've got some thoughts on that and you'll see that in it as we get into the video, but I'm also unique in the fact that I have ridden the original Triumph retro bikes, meaning before they were retro. So my first bike was a 1965 Triumph uh, TT Special. I had a 1971 TR6C and these bikes were the bikes that I cut my teeth on when I was a young, young fella. So I'm gonna also throw in some comparisons with that bike in mind and which of these two bikes, the Royal Enfield or the, the Triumph uh, Street Twin, approaches more of the purest retro feel. So I'm gonna throw in some of those comments also. So I, welcome I just wanna add, uh, I've covered everything I could think of here uh, in this next upcoming uh, review, but if you have any questions or anything that I missed or any other things that you might want to ask about any of those bikes, I'd be glad to answer them in the comments. So please uh, ask your questions in the comments. Uh, make some comments if you like. I'm open to uh, criticism. I'm open to questions. So uh, feel free to uh, expand the discussion in the comments section. Well, I Thank welcome you. you to come along and uh, join me on this vlog. Uh, let's take a look outside. We're going to go outside now and uh, take a look at the bike. I hope my light is good here. And uh, here's the bike, my little patio. As you can see, it's, uh, it's an attractive bike. Looks retro. I guess you're all familiar with it. I don't have to tell you what it looks like. So. I'm going to start right at the front here and go over some of the uh, fit and finish details com as compared to the Street Twin. Now, let's start with the fenders. Street Twin, it was plastic. And on this one, also plastic. Um, and again, what I'm going to do here, I don't have the Street Twin anymore, so I'm going to insert some still photos as you'll see in a minute. And those still photos will show you some of the Triumph uh, components. Now, uh, Triumph had a uh, plastic headlight casing. This one has a metal. Uh, it has a chrome ring. Triumph had a, I forget, had a blacked out ring, I think. Uh, we have twin clocks here. Triumph Street Twin only had a single clock. These are really basic instruments. Uh, it's a tachometer and a speedometer. You have here, this is, <laughs> this is the only kind of uh, extra you have. This is a tripometer. You, so you have a trip one and a trip two. You push and push and that's it. Uh, there's no ride modes. Uh, there's no uh, monitoring of fuel. Uh, you have a fuel gauge. It's simply a fuel gauge. That's it. There's no telling you when you're going to run out of fuel. There's nothing on this extra. Again, moving to the throttle. This is a cabled throttle. Triumph had a throttle by wire. This is very simple. Um, forks are very similar. These forks, the front forks, the suspension and the rear suspension are both made by Gabriel. That's a, a fairly well-known aftermarket automotive shock manufacturer. So they're, they're quality made, but as I'll get into later, they, they really, uh, they are rather soft, dampened. Uh, what else can I get into? Okay, let's go back to the plastic versus metal. These are chrome plastic turn signals. Triumph Street Twin had plastic turn signal casings. Um, moving down here. Uh, Triumph had uh, powder-coated black uh, 
side cases. This is polished aluminum. Now I've shined that up quite a bit. It's a little dirty right now, but I polished and buffed this and I also, I flat sanded it to get all the striations out of it from the factory because they used a, uh, a pretty crude sanding disc or belt on this thing when they manufactured it. It was okay, but if you look closely, you can see some striations. Well, I block sanded it and got all those out and polished it with some mother's aluminum polish. And that takes a little bit of maintenance, but that's kind of, that's kind of my style. I'm an old school kind of guy. Again, uh, valve cover, same thing. Polished aluminum, st stamped stainless steel, uh, throttle body cover. Uh, Triumph had similar. Side box covers, plastic, same on the Street Twin. They were also plastic. Uh, we've got a uh, stainless steel stamped heel guard. Uh, and the Street Twin also had a, had an aluminum, uh, anodized aluminum uh, heel guard there. And going back to the rear fender, also plastic with a plastic extender. This bike is completely stock. I haven't taken off the fender extenders yet. I plan to remove these eventually. Right now we're having rainy seasons in the Philippines, so I think I'll leave them on for a month or two until we get out of that. Let's see, what other kind of uh, plastic detail can we get into? Okay, uh, again, turn signals are plastic. That's a plastic housing. That is metal though, I believe. Painted metal. Uh, there was a lot of powder coating on the uh, Street Twin, and I really don't know what's powder coated on this or not. I think some things are. I don't know if the fork tubes are powder coated or painted. I'm guessing they're powder coated, but I don't know. And the only reason I'm guessing they are is that if you look up here carefully, you can see some thickness to this uh, coating on the uh, triple tree crown. <clears throat> I don't know if I can go in there, but you can see a little thickness to it, which may lend it itself to uh, being powder coat, but I don't I don't really know. Uh, it was not fairly obvious on the Street Twin. Um, what else can I talk about in terms of uh, fit and finish? Um, essentially this engine is a mirror image of a Triumph engine. If you look at it and if you would look at this in reverse you would have the the clutch on the other side and uh, you would have the engine reverse in that sense. Um, which really it makes sense this engine was designed by triumph engineers or former triumph engineers so really it's a, a lot of similarities to a a street twin motor however it is air cooled it has an oil cooler so yeah, some people say it's oil cooled i don't go for that i think i would say it's an air cooled engine with uh, an addition of an oil cooling system and that just maintains the temperature of the oil so the engine doesn't overheat under extreme conditions. Uh, oil filter is in a great place to get to right in the front. Don't have to crawl under the bike on the street twin. The oil filter was hidden under the bike and it was fairly not difficult but a little bit more work to get to. <clears throat> uh, seat. I like the seat. I was thinking of eventually changing the seat but it's pretty much what the retro bikes look like the, a bench seat so i'm not going to bother changing that at least not right now the street twin had this kind of a convoluted cruiser seat almost like a king and queen but and i swapped that out for a bench seat to make it look more period correct because i'm a retro kind of a guy um it's got this grab bar here i'll probably take that off i was waiting to see if it's advantageous to get it up on the center stand the bike does have a center stand Street Twin did not have a center stand. It has this nice handy grab rail. So this is good for putting it up on the center stand. So I may indeed take off this rail here. Um, the pipes are interesting. The exhaust is very simple. This is a double walled system, chromed outer. And then there's an inner pipe of about, I don't know, I think it's an inch and a quarter or less. So these will not tarnish probably because they're, they're insulated by a layer of air. There's no catalytic converter anywhere here. The catalytic converter is here in the muffler. So what's really easy is that if you wanna replace the cans with an aftermarket muffler, when you remove these cans, off comes the catalytic converter as well. So it makes it really easy to do that. Fit and finish wise, foot pegs, very similar to the Street Twin. 
uh, kind of an anodized aluminum with a rubber insert, almost identical. Uh, shift mechanism and brake lever, simple stamped metal. Nothing fancy, the Triumph had a fancy forged piece, looked very sturdy, but one thing about this, if you dump your bike, this is more likely to bend and not damage your transmission, which on the street tune was a big problem with some guys, because if you dump the bike, the, the forging wouldn't bend and it, would, it was hooked directly, hooked directly to the transmission, so it would, you know, lunch your gears if you, if you fell over. This one, even if, you, even if it didn't bend, it's pivoting right on your foot peg mount, so with an indirect link to the transmission. So the likelihood of damaging the transmission is slim. I call that an advantage. Uh, twin cradle frame, very similar to the street twin, almost identical. Has a junction right here where you can, where it's uh, joined together, same as the street twin. Uh, the side cases here again, polished aluminum. I love the vintage look of the split cases. Uh, of course, behind here is uh, the transmission is hidden over under here. Behind here is a sprocket. This is merely a, a sprocket cover, and that's the same as the street twin actually, except it will be on the reverse side. This, however, is aluminum. On the street twin, it was plastic. Uh, so plastic versus metal. Pretty much a, a tie with the advantage going to the real Enfield. Again, uh, get chain guard plastic like the Street Twin also. Okay, uh, some of the specifics uh, about the, the quality here. Brem uh, these are Brembo Bybray brakes. They are not Brembo brakes. Don't let anybody tell you they're uh, under license. They're, they're, the name is licensed, but these are cheap cheap brakes. They have a lot of chuck in them. They will corrode over time. I've had other Indian bikes with uh, vibrate bikes, brakes, <laughs> and they're, uh, they need a lot of attention. You got to keep clean or they'll corrode and rust up. In fact, there's been a recall on these because of corrosion. That could be in, in cl cl climates or weather conditions where there's a lot of salt or corrosive material on the roads, but they need a lot of attention. You got to keep after them so they don't freeze up. Uh, but if you look carefully, we've got braided steel cables. They're coated in plastic. They won't rust. Uh, braided steel brake cables are great. Uh, brake front brake is similar. I don't remember. I don't recall the diameter. Similar to the Street Twin. It's a full floating disc. It's got ABS uh, front and back. Um, who makes the ABS? I have forgotten. It's not. I don't know if it's a Bosch system. I think it's Bosch both Bosch uh, fuel injection and ABS system. Uh, a note about the ABS. I've had three bikes with ABS in modern days. First one was the MT-07. Uh, I didn't like the ABS on the uh, MT-07 because it, uh, I mean, engaged really quickly and you could hear it click, 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 click. You could hear the chatter and it gave you a really insecure feeling when you're about to stop because it would just engage and all of a sudden you're, you're kind of like skating along. I didn't like it. Uh, when I got the straight twin, uh, the ABS didn't work properly. If I was going on at high speed and stood on the rear brake, it would lock up. I could lock it up and, bite, and would just override the ABS. Uh, the ABS on this, now, it's either not working at all or it works so well that it's imperceptible. I've tried standing on the rear brake. It gets to the point where you can hear the tire squeal, but you can't lock it up. It's almost perfect. So you're getting maximum braking effort without the bike locking up. The front, I have not been able to engage. I haven't stood on it hard enough, even though I've tried. I haven't stood on it hard enough to seemingly engage the front. And that, it takes some effort. Even on my other bikes, it was difficult to engage the uh, front ABS. Uh, okay, that's the only feature it has. It's ABS. Now, again, getting back to the engine, this bike has twin throttle bodies. Triumph only had one. So there's a little bit of an advantage here. It's a smaller motor. It's not, doesn't have near the torque or power that the Street Twin had, but the Street Twin was 900 cc's, albeit a very detuned 900 cc's. Uh, but this does have twin throttle bodies, mechanically driven throttle. It's got nice twin horns. It sounds like an automobile. People jump when you beep the horn. They're not expecting a motorcycle to be behind it. Uh, again, we got a powder coated. Cases, kind of a gray, gunmetal gray case 
powder coating same with the cylinders this is a black this is a silver paint or powder coating here uh, this is not rust on this I had put some ACF 50 on on these fins and this is like a cast material that's been painted but that'll wipe off I it, the ACF 50 burned off and it kind of left a residue there I could polish that off um, a note about the features this is a bare bones bike it has ABS that's it has no traction control it's got no anti-theft lockup it's got no uh, riding modes it's got no uh, advanced features that tell you anything about the bike in fact it doesn't even have a uh, OBD2 output port like the Triumph did it has a port that's kind of proprietary to um, Royal Enfield I can't show it to you I didn't take the seat off but it's a proprietary port that you need this adapter to get to an OBD2 to plug it into an OBD, OBD2 reader and I suppose you could get that adapter cable and then do it but the only thing you can read is uh, the, AB, uh, the ABS system so you can bleed it it gives you a procedure that's very similar to the street trim where you're opening valves and bleeding the system and closing valves and you need that that device in order to do that and uh, the ECU is basically for fueling only there's nothing else there there are sensors of course there's an air box sensor uh, there's uh, a crank sensor and a few other sensors all having to do with fuel management but there's nothing else on this so it's really a bare minimum bike without any any features and I like that it's simple uh, when you go to adjust the valves for those of you who haven't read about this bike the uh, the street twin had a uh, kind of a uh, uh, bucket and shim system you had to pull this off it's difficult to, to pull off the, the lifters and carefully remove the shims and don't careful not to drop them down into the engine and it was trial and error in order to get the valves adjusted this has a simple old-fashioned screw and nut type and if you're familiar with that I can't it's pretty much that you have an outside nut that you loosen and then you have a screw that adjusts the tappet clearance and then you lock the knock nut and uh, seal the seal the thing up at the right uh, clearance it's very simple I mean and you don't even have to take the tank off to do this there's plenty of room this motor sits quite low in the chassis the street twin had the catalytic converter underneath here where the, there is no catalytic converter underneath so they've got the motor down low in the chassis so it rides really low like a low center of gravity it feels a lot lighter than it's uh, 440 some pounds um, and uh, so by being lower you get more access here you just get, all you got to do is loosen the tank and block it up a little bit you can take the valve cover off and get in there and do the valve job in probably an hour or two I mean on the street twin it would take hours half a day to do that so maintenance is very very user friendly um, frame is uh, designed by Harris frames which is a subsidiary now of Royal Enfield uh, an English company so the, the frame is really well engineered the, the bike handles like a dream it's very softly suspended these are Gabriel shocks very high quality finish very high quality fit uh, I've got them up two clicks now on the preload there's some issues with that I don't know for how much detail I want to go into it but the the bike is undersprung for anything but comfortable easy going riding and it's very adequate I mean uh, on smooth roads it's there's nothing wrong with it if you like a smoothing smooth riding bike if you get on rough roads it shatters and and loses its feel the front end is not planted if you really lean it over hard but on a smooth road it's incredibly balanced I mean uh, I would say on a if I had a macadam road smooth no potholes if I was riding this in the street twin I would prefer this over the street twin it's not quite as powerful but so you can't compare it in terms of going in fast braking and pulling out but it's very confidence inspiring and very well balanced ride I'm very pleased with the way it rides on smooth roads even in the twisties but if you're pushing it and you're on rough concrete or some kind of a washboard road it just it's all over the place so street twin was similar but not quite as bad in that respect um, now let's look at it in terms of comparing either of these bikes to a uh, to a 
to a triumph of yesteryear. Uh, the reason I bought the street twin was to kind of re-experience my uh, my days of youth when I had the uh, the TT special, and the street twin was the closest thing I could get to it. But I have to tell you, the street twin is not a, a retro bike. It's a modern bike that's styled like a retro bike. It's not a Triumph. It's a modern bike. It's got complete fuel management. It's got all kinds of uh, engine sensors, uh, various things. It's got a locked ECU. Uh, you really can't get in there and touch anything, although I guess with tune, tune ECU you can now. But uh, it's, it's a water-cooled modern Euro 4 bike and it really, other than the sound, and even the sound is not quite like a, an old Triumph because the old Triumphs were uh, you know, a 360-degree crank. This is a 270-degree crank, so it sounds more like a Harley. And this Royal Enfield is the same. It's a 270-degree crank, very similar to a Street Twin. But uh, So given that the Street Twin was a modern bike masquerading as a, as a vintage bike, this bike is pretty much a, I would say, a vintage bike upgraded to meet the minimum standards of Euro 4. So there's nothing on it you don't need. It's air-cooled, mechanical throttle, it's got no bells and whistles whatsoever, no no feedback with gauges with all this all the various systems management information that you can get, throwing codes and this and that. It's a very simple bike. And for me, and much to my chagrin, it's uh, more like a 1965 Triumph than the the modern Street Twin or it, its uh, cousins, the T100 and other bikes. So, if you're looking for basic, simple, uh, you know, going backwards retro bike, I would say this is the bike to have. It's easy to ride, easy to own. You can work on it yourself. Um, the uh, shop manual I downloaded easily is readily available for free. You don't have the Triumph shop manual. You have to subscribe and pay seven dollars an hour or something to download it. And uh, I did all that, got it, but it was a pain in the butt. Um, and it's almost identical to work on inside. The cam is almost identical. Uh, you can get cams for these. SNS Racing makes cams for these. They make a big bore kit. They make a high compression piston kit. I don't believe I'm going to do any of that. I don't, I'm not going to rule it out, but at my age, I think now I'm comfortable with the power it puts out. I'm gonna do a couple of things. I'm gonna replace these uh, catalytic converter cans with some cheap aftermarket cans. And I found some very cheap ones, which they're chrome just like these, and if they don't last and don't hold up and don't sound right, I'll probably get some better ones, but they were only they were less than a hundred bucks for a pair. So we'll see how they look. Uh, so I want to get that done to get the uh, get the uh, uh, exhaust uh, freed up a little bit, and I plan to get a DNA filter on the other side, underneath this side case, uh, resides the air filter. I already I took off the uh, plastic restrictive cover and just put some screws with uh, rubber grommets to hold the air filter in so essentially it's already opened up. The difference between a DNA and a stock filter when it's clean is probably negligible. You're never going to know the difference. Just getting that cover off the front let let more air in it is, is probably adequate. Um, and the only other thing I may do is to pull that small cover off and put on a 14 tooth sprocket to gear it down. This thing is a six speed. The street twin was only a five speed so this is geared way high for the Philippines. I, I, <laughs> I, I can't tell what gear I'm in half the time. If I'm in, if I'm in fourth, fifth, or sixth, I really don't know. I'm, because you're going fast enough for the Cebu roads to, uh, to really not know what gear you're in. I'm getting better at it now. But sixth gear is pretty much unusable. Uh, so I'm gonna drop the gearing down a little bit and go for a little bit more acceleration. Tremendously smooth bike. It's uh, it's it, it doesn't really lose much to the street twin there's a lot of cheaper things about it you can you can tell some of the things but really it's uh it's not 
twice the price quality you get with a street twin over this because this is about well in the Philippines for example this is uh, it cost me 348,000 pesos I don't know what that is in dollars, but my street twin cost me 740,000 pesos so it's more than twice the price it's not it's not twice the bike and in many ways this bike for me is uh, is more desirable because I'm really a old school guy I like the old school bikes I like to be able to work on a bike and uh, I think that that uh, for me is uh, an advantage uh, I'm trying to think is there anything else I can go over here it does have a slipper clutch so it does does give have a very fairly light clutch the clutch is not quite as easy as the straight twins but it is very light it is a slipper type clutch <clears throat> that's the only other modern convenience it has um, what do we got here a grommet where does this grommet go oh that's just a, a, a holder uh, it's a gray metal I don't know why they cut, made that an off-color gray but um, one thing about this uh, front suspension I'll go into the suspension now is there's only a hundred and ten millimeters of front suspension travel. The Street Twin had like I believe 130 so it's significantly less. So that would be fine if you had enough damping, rebound and uh, spring strength but the springs are very soft and there's virtually no damping and a little bit of rebound on this. You can top it out and bottom it out very easily going over a puddle. It drops out and you get this kind of a squeaky thud when you go over a pothole even at low speed so uh, front suspension is needs work uh, I mean you can just put a preload in here there's some guys that are making inserts but you can't put a, a, a preload adjuster on here because of the handlebars look at the oh I got dirt on here uh, you, you can't put a, a preload adjuster because it interferes with the handlebar you have to you have to put different risers on your handlebars to, to put a pre uh, preload adjuster but you could put a, a different stanchion tube inside of a, of a longer length to compress the springs a little bit and that'll take care of some of the some of the preload but you're still now you're reducing the travel even more so with only 110 to start with it's it's not really the most desirable thing to do I think if it becomes a real problem and I get tired of it I'm gonna initially put uh, some tubes inside to give it a little bit more preload and then eventually I'm going to get a uh, YSS uh, emulator with I mean, the, the emulator kit comes with uh, tubes and adjustable preload and at which time I'll probably have to relocate the handlebar or get a different kind of handlebar only a little bit but moving it back just a little bit uh, to allow clearance here but uh, it needs that very big time uh, the rear suspension uh, is not so bad although what I did find out doing a sag test is that in the stock position it has about three to four millimeters of uh, of uh, static sag that means difference between the, the frame off you know the bike off the ground with the rear wheel dangling and uh, the bike sitting on its rear wheel is about three to four millimeters which is a you know, some but it should be around five or so uh, but it has some but as soon as you jack up these things by just two notches it eliminates any of the static sag so you're zero zero when it's sitting on the on the shock with nobody on it and so while you reduce the overall sag it really doesn't solve the problem because if you're going to ride hard and you hit a big bump and it, there's no reserve cushion to and it's liable to throw you up in the saddle a little bit but I'm not sure this bike is that kind of a bike it's not a high performance bike not sure what kind of problem that really represents but so I'm, I'm not too concerned about the rear shocks at this point although I may change those out I, I didn't even do that on the street twin actually uh, and I, I don't ride that hard anymore but I like to corner aggressively on smooth roads so we'll see but the front end I'm going to definitely do something I, it's the front end needs needs a lot of work uh, what I'd like to do with the brakes eventually is get rid of those by brake calipers and find a Brembo replacement but there's no part number there's no there's no exchange I'm sure there is I've seen a bike with Brembo 
Grand Brembo brakes on it, and there must be a cross reference, but I don't know. I don't know the number. There's no Brembo site doesn't have it, and there's no uh, no aftermarket people offering that yet. Um, what else can I say here? Swing arm is almost identical to the street twin. It's a, it's a rounded over rectangle, like a long elongated oval. Uh, the adjuster is very simple. It's old school. You can see that it's, uh, you know, it's not sophisticated. No, there's no fancy sliding aluminum block. There's just a, uh, a pitch weld in here that you pinch against the, the uh, uh, swing arm. And here you just have a simple double lock nut adjuster for, for your wheel alignment. Uh, so again, nothing sophisticated, very simple. Uh, this is okay, I don't mind it. Uh, other than that, oh, I know what I could show you. I'm gonna go inside for a minute, show you a big plus. Okay, here we go. What do you know? A legitimate toolkit. When was the last time you saw a motorcycle that had a full toolkit? When I say full toolkit, this is about the best I've seen in the last 25 years. You get all the basics. Three Allen wrenches, shock spanner, rear wheel wrench, extending leverage arm, a couple of metric wrenches, and a Phillips head screwdriver. Pretty cool. And uh, all of I got this open, let's go ahead and pop the seat. Now, the only thing I don't like, in order to pop the seat, you gotta take the side cover off, and then you can get to this thing here, gotta pull that, and then pull the seat off. So now you have access to the seat. I'm gonna put this aside. So now you got access to the seat. Looks just like the street twin. Here's the uh, ECU. Very simple. It's a very small ECU. It doesn't have a lot to do. Fuse box. It's got fuses in there. Extra fuses in there. Here's the plug-in for their proprietary uh, engine management monitoring cable, which I'm sure you could get your hands on one, and then you could uh, use an OBD2 reader to, to check out some different things. Um, battery is housed here down here so you just you have to take this cover off you can undo this thing and then slide the battery out this way uh, so that's fairly easy to get to uh, seat latch is almost identical to the triumph tank mount is identical to the triumph um, again plastic fenders um, I can't take this side off because you gotta have a little Allen wrench. I don't think I want to go to that trouble. A little Allen key goes in there and you take that off and then you can simply pop this off and get in there and then there's where the air box uh, and the air filter reside under there. Tires are the uh, Pirelli Sport Comps, same tires on Street Twin. The one thing I noticed on this bike is they don't really behave the same as they did on the street twin i guess because maybe the street twin had a lot more power uh they really sucked on the street twin i got them off as fast as i could but I, again i only got 400 kilometers on these the tires really aren't that well broken in but they're not as bad as they seem to be on the street twin so i'm gonna leave these on until they wear out before i even think about getting getting different tires got powder coated rims stainless steel spokes very nice. I mean, it's, I'm surprised. I'm really, I'm really impressed with the quality of these shocks. If you look at them, they're forged ends. The Street Twin actually had a kind of a welded affair, and they actually had corrosion on them when I got it. It was like a, a rod and welded tang. This is a nicely forged item. The, it's got a, a damper, a damper sponge. You can see that little orange thing in there for uh, for bottoming out. Triumph didn't have that gas shock uh, Triumph didn't have a gas shock or gas reservoir I mean it doesn't mean a lot because these shocks are, are under sprung I, I don't know if you could get springs for them or or what I don't mind the look of the shock they're probably a quality product uh, but that remains to be seen what I do with that 
Um, so, oh, the other thing is, uh, talking about adjusting the valves on the street twin. Well, if you're gonna, I guess you don't have to take the cover off on the Triumph, but you gotta, you have to jack it up. If you, and there's no, if you didn't have a paddock stand, you spin the rear wheel to get the valves top dead center. But here, you just take this little inspection cover off, and you can you can turn it right there with a big wrench Allen key, and it makes it a little bit more simple. Um, so I guess that's about it. I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, the paint job is quite nice. This is a very high quality gas cap. The Street Twin had a kind of a pressed metal stamp thing. It was attractive, but you push, turn, then unspin, and then turn, and lock. And this one, you just open this up, turn, pull it out. There's no spinning. It's kind of, once you get used to it, it's, it's fairly easy. Um, I don't know what else to go over here. I'd ask you if you had any questions, but this is a one-way communication, so we really can't do anything about that. Uh, I guess to, to wrap it up, I'd say, I had, bottom line is uh, originally I, when I looked at this bike, I said, well, I got, I'm going to add this, I'm going to add that, I'm going to modify this, but now that I've got it, I think I'm going to leave it visually pretty much the way it is, other than the uh, mufflers. Uh, maybe the tail light, I don't know. I'm getting to the point where, you know, this is the way the bike came. It's not really detracting from its performance. I'm more interested in just doing a, a moderate tune on it to get it up to performance the way I like a bike to ride. And, and I'm going to do some suspension work on it now. I'm pretty well decided as time goes on. I'm at least going to do the, uh, probably do the, the uh, drop-in emulator kit on the front end. Not sure about the back end. But that's about it. You know, and the tail light could go. They make some pretty pretty nifty smaller aftermarket units and, and turn some of the same with the front although these don't really they don't they don't really uh, bother me too much I'm not one to I'm not looking to make a, a custom build exterior bike like I do with my street twin um, I like it I like it for what it is it's uh, it's a nice bike it's a quality bike and it's if I had to give this a rating between a 1965 Triumph TT Special and a 2017 Street Twin, I'd say this falls squarely in the middle. You know, it's got it's got a lot of those qualities of the vintage Triumphs, BSAs, and Royal Enfields. Uh, and it only sacrifices a little bit to the modern age, enough to get get to Euro Four. So. Uh, uh, I'm real pleased with it, and uh, I'll give you some updates as things go along. Thanks for watching.